Okay, welcome to my Vinto Aureo video series. Uh, in this videos, I will be talking about Italian references and nods to culture in general. I will be covering the continents of the series following the manga, so volume by volume. Originally, I said I was going to follow the animation, but I thought better as this way I have a general understanding on when people are caught up to what I'm talking about. So, even though I've just said this, I will advise you, watcher of this video, to see this videos after you finish the series because I think you will have less fear of spoilers and I will have more freedom of speaking, but I will avoid spoilers anyway. Uh, to start off, Vento Aureo begins with a cover. Uh, and this cover has Giorno Giovanna, the protagonist, with him doing a pose. The thing is, Giorgio, written with G-I-O, it's pronounced Giorgio, non Giorgio, like as Giorno, as Giovanni. When Hirohiko Araki was creating the name of Sirius or everything, he wanted it to be more Italian, so he, he avoided the J's because in, in Italy, some people pronounce J's as Y's, so it will not be yo-yo. An interesting thing about this cover is that it has Giorno with chains on his left hand. And that's significant for another cover later on. Keep it in mind. So the first page of the manga starts with a cover through of Italian stuff. So there's the David. It's pronounced not David, non Davide. Just David. It's like international. And there's a plane. In the center of Italy, which is hmm, telling of something else. There's coffee. Coffee is very important in Italy, and I will be speaking more about it later on. Uh, there's tomato. Tomato is very used in Italian dishes. There's the Colosseum, normal generic symbol of Italy, and also foreshadowing in a way. There's the Alfa Romeo, which is, yeah, you know, Alfa Romeo. And there's like the Brunelleschi Dome which is famous because it does not have like internal structure like this column or something lifting it up it has equilibrium so it just all the parts like collide with each other anyway so Koichi makes a joke about Italy being a land of ancient history and economic crisis uh, Italy in the 70s 80s had an economic bubble and since it popped it has been an economic crisis since then thing is in these years the mafia kind of popped up more in relevancy like the modern type so it's actually kind of telling like there's already some anticipation of what's going on in the series here the chapter cover has like Giorno Giovanna with his gloves on it's symbolizing something I will not go on now. On his left, there's Adam in the Sistine Chapel version, which receives life and like his soul from God, which is called Dio. So you can get where that comes from. And he has, if you watch close, he has Omega zippers. There's a thing about Jordan, though, he has like some feather uh, pattern going on, like with with things on the neck and on the right there's an angel with a feather i should look up this into a bit more but if you know something about it tell me because i'm interested if you see something i may not be talking about tell me an interesting thing that the jojo's colored adventure team the translator of this version i'm looking at did is to put lire as euro they say euro and there's a conversion rate instead of like something lire is like 30 40 euro and i think they made that to be more like understandable Understandable by modern means, but yeah, that's it. The thing about Koichi, he's trying to look up for Haru no Shiobana. So that's the Japanese name of Giorno Giovanna. So the thing is, like, when some Asian people come to Italy or like other countries, they have the names like romanticized. So they become like, like an Italian name or Italian sounding name. In this case, Haru no Shiobana became Giorno Giovanna, and Giorno means day, so. Hiroko Araki said that he wanted to make it sound like he's different than Dio, so it's, you know, he's pure. And in its abbreviation, Giorno, of Buongiorno, which means good morning, and it's a young version of saying, like, Giorno, young people do that. And it's just opposed to Arrivederci, which is mean goodbye. Giovanna is like the female name with Gio. I'm not sure why he did that, like, the female thing. So when we first introduced with Giorno, he's doing a like, weird ear thing. Like, what? And he's bribing some guards by giving them uh, money and tobacco. This is a known way of giving, like, bribes. Because in Italy, uh, people don't look a lot like tobacco as weird because a lot of people literally smoke cigarettes. Like, a lot of them. 
So a thing that comes up is that Jovno, even though he's a minor, he's like 15, has a driving license or does not need one. Thing is like, initially a lot of people did not check people when driving and Naples is infamous for having fake driving license and giving licenses to uh, underage people. And also, there's a line here and if you watch closely, it's not a single line of people, it's just a mesh of people. And that's what they call an Italian line. So Kuichi here is being scammed by Giorno, he just drives away with his luggage and it's like a famous Naples scam, like it's known, a lot of people do it and the people on the back are snickering because it just, it's like that thing that it's talked about in part 3 when the people are being scammed. It's an ideology present in famously in Naples. So on the second chapter of the manga, there's this guy who's called Likio Luca, who has a shovel with SPQR, and he comes up to Giorno. Anyway, he has an eye that keeps emitting tears, and he is a reference to a character from a novel by Pirandello called Charles Copo la Luna. And it's this guy, it's a Sicilian miner, that was like in an explosion and his eye, he lost, keeps emitting tears that he keeps on drinking because they're salty and remind him it was his son that died in the... Anyway, uh... I've already talked about Pirandello in another video, I'm talking about Persona. So if you're interested in Pirandello, I'll be talking about him there for a while. So, at a certain point, he takes out Giorno's wallet, and there's a photo of Dio Brando, with written Dio Brando on it. And in Italy, it's common for people to have a relative's photo in their wallet. So later on in chapter 3, there's this castle in the sea, which is called Castel de Lovo, Margellina, which is like an egg castle, which is a castle near like a very nice walkway, very known for walk. And then there's Dante e Briatrice, it's a fruit vendor shop. The thing is, Dante Dante is one of Italy's most important writers. He also created like the basis and structure of a dialect based on the Florence uh, dialect, which developed into the modern Italian. And Beatrice was more or less his muse. In the poetic of the time, like poets wrote of women so fair and pure that they idolized and they could never get near them because they were so pure and uh, the idols, I don't know, idols at a certain point. There's pastries brought up. These type of pastries are very present in all territories, but they're more common in southern Italy and they're very heavy, very like thick, very greasy, very... So here, Giorno is paying for his coffee. In Italy, it's very common to see people have getting a coffee and coffee shops everywhere because like coffee in Italy is like a bit like tea in Japan or England. It's like a sort of ritual thing that is done through the day. At a certain point there's Giorno talking to Koichi about him stealing his wallet and there's a weird thing that you do like in Italy where like like thieves and like people that done like a mishap like are very open about it but not so sorry about it like they're, like they're talking about it as if it was normal that's the sort of idea not always but is a thing. On the later chapter Bucellati is coming on the first page you can see Two things. One, it's a Caprianic, which is a reference to a Shibuya, like, like the Japanese Shibuya bar, which is called Gas Panic. And there's like on the phone, the payphone, there's a SIP, which is Società Italiana per l'esercizio telefonico. So it's like Italian Society for Telephonic Exercise. And that, th those are four words. So it doesn't have any sense that's three letters. It works with like subscriptions and things. And later page, they explain the name change of Giorno Giovanna from Shiobana to Giovanna. Later on there's Giorno that takes on the tram, the number 11. And the thing about it is like in the 80s this was still the tram they used for a lot of time. In Italy they didn't change public services that much. So it was understandable that when he, when Hirohiko Araki went here there, he probably used this tram a lot. And there's Lira on the floor. And there's like this thing that Bucellati is doing here. When he's approaching Giorno for the first time, he is approaching him with jokes and, and being like stupid. And then he's dead serious. And 
And that's like a, an interrogation strategy which is used. Bucellati is a jewelry and watch brand uh, which was born for the merging of two companies owned by a son and a father, which is kind of foreshadowing in a way. And then later on, there's Bucellati that puts Leaky Eye Luca's eye in Giorno's hand and licks him. And <laughs> the thing is, this is actually kind of a reference to Ziscarda because apart from the eye, he licks his sweat, which is like the same thing as his tears, and he talks about taste. So that's actually a reference to Ziscarda. So later on there is Butelati that gives like a big punch to Giorno and people try not to get mixed up with it because like in Italy people try, don't try to get mixed up with things. I would like to talk about what the ladybug represents. The ladybug is a common theme in Giorno, like he wears ladybugs everywhere and his stand has like some ladybug visuals. So I'll be going on about that for a while. So ladybug in Italian is called coccinella and it's associated with the Virgin Mary. And since the ladybugs eliminates aphids and parasites, it protects crops, so it protects plants and gives life. So that's one of the reasons why he can give life. So it's also a symbol of protection, abundance and happiness. And it protects dreams, like the dreams of he has. And it's a symbol of courage and to strive for their own aspirations. And since they reproduce a lot, they are associated with regenerative energy, with the sun, which is on the day, so giorno, and with spiritual rebirth, which is very foreshadowing about giving love and friendship and warmth. So there's a saying that if a ladybug lands on your head, every single dot on his back gives you a, a month of happiness or a lot of energy. And that's literally what happens when Giorno gives like a big punch to Bucellati, which just powers him up. And the thing about the symbol of the ladybug is like it's tied to infancy and impulsivity that it has to be controlled. So the idea is that when he punches Bucellati, he's giving him energy, which he has to learn to control. And that's my diatribe on the ladybug. So when Bucellati is talking to John about like hitting his head like, like a football ball, uh, there's sometimes in the part, there's some football references that come up. Because the thing about Italy is that a lot of people here are like obsessed with like football. A bit too much. A bit too much. Like, n not in a healthy way. Uh, anyway, um, later on when Bucellati is hit by Giorno, he calls him a disgraziato. Disgraziato means like a failure, like who has not been great and also... Like, it's kind of like an outdated insult. It's like what a grandmother would say, let's say. But it's fun. And that's the first volume of Vinto Aureo. I hope this was like presented well and it, and you liked it also. Yeah, I'll be doing these for quite a while now. So if you're interested in having more of these and knowing when they come out, you can subscribe to the channel or not. And I guess that's it. So bye.